a space. In this world, everyone wants to be unique. Yo, have you seen this hair design everywhere? Ask everybody where they got that shit from. Tell me where it started. They're gonna look at me, you heard? But there is a place on this wonderful thing we call Earth where that is not the case. Where being individual, being unique is seen as gross. <laughs> and that is China. There's a phrase in China, which is that the China Chinese people come here and are amazed at our Chinese buffets. Brother, our Chinese buffets, at least the one on New Jersey that I used to go to from time to time, literally is like the furthest from Chinese. Okay. They literally, they have, they had like pizza, burgers, all, all Amer dude, dude, they had mozzarella sticks. I mean, it went hard as fuck, but I wasn't going there to be like, oh, I can't. China Star Buffet. Wait, is it was it China Star Buffet? I wonder if it was. Let me I don't remember what the name was, but if it's just that, it's like Was it China Star Buffet? I don't fucking remember, but there was a place Dude, it was so good. That's how you know they got good Chinese. Listen, listen, listen. There was, oh my lord. Oh my lord, dude. They had everything, dog. They got everything on Route 18. I think it might have been on Route 18. I don't remember. Dude, fuck. My mouth is watering thinking about that shit, dude. Fuck. The big tree, the tall tree, attracts the wind and it destroys them. Okay. And that is exactly what happened to today's subculture, which is the Shamateur. Shamateur. What the fuck? At first glance, you'll probably see him and you'll think, Jimmy, that's an emo. And this is where I'll say, my friend, come close. I'll put you ah, uh, I know. Closer. Come closer. Let me tell you about the the origins and the nuances. I'll give it to you that the women, to be honest, look very much just like your standard emo scene girl. I'll give you that. But it's really the boys where things get a little spicy. If we start in the the leggy region, they have skinny jeans with rips in them, but they do differ from the emos because they all choose different colors. So. The Chamate might wear red. They might wear blue. They might wear sort of pastel colors. Also, very closely, you must look at the ankle. The Chamate love to reveal a small slender piece of the ankle. If we move slightly up top, they also will wear typically a belt around the trousers that is more often like a knockoff Gucci kind of belt in which they'll then tuck in a tight fitting, either plain t-shirt or a tight fitting vest just to show off the fucking Guns! And this does differ from the emos. If you look at the emos, they're wearing band merch, you know, last days of November 2010 tour. Whereas a big difference is with the music. These lot don't listen to that style of music. We'll get into it more in a bit. And also you've even got like nice leather jackets with studs. That Again, that's not something you'd see emos wearing. Bro, I'm sorry, but he's talking about China's most hated subculture in 2024. And I assume they hated it into oblivion. Like they ended this subculture. They must have because every photo he's using is circa 2010. Like, like, I feel like this was a subculture in the same era as it was a subculture in America. You know what I mean? Like I've yet to see one new one. Like one, one photo is all my space, dude. Look. Chamate, it's really important to have a full understanding of Chinese culture. And to do that, we need to go all the way back to the 90s. And it all started at the beginning. That guy's funny. In the 90s, whilst you were wearing Jenko jeans, doing the Macarena and getting strangled by slinkies. In China, these fads and gimmicks were nowhere to be seen. And that's because throughout the 1900s, China was completely shut off from the rest of the world. Close the doors. No one's coming in or out. But then man like Deng Xiaoping came in and said, open the doors. Deng, mate, you can't be serious. Do it. All right, fine. 
In the late 70s through to the 80s, China was transforming from this lonely, isolated bra who watched a few Charisma on Command videos, and now was this charismatic Giga Chad. Everyone wanted to be China's friend. Your $200 Nike Aero Pump orthopedic waterbed mattress with big bass fishing PlayStation 2 built in. All of that. This is like, I mean, he's, he's using the other guy who's like kind of cool. And also, he seemingly is, like, kind of understanding. Which is shocking from an Oibrov. I don't know anything about Jimmy the Giant, but it seems like a cool content creator. Like, he's, like, not instantly talking about the Chinese as though they're, like, some scary alien or some shit. That was being made by... 10 year old Li Ming, who was chain smoking cigarettes in his last 16 hour shift in the sweatshop, making 20p an hour. And for the big businesses, the factory owners, the government officials, this was pretty ideal. But for the factory workers, it wasn't so ideal. What would start happening is a wave of workers from very rural parts of China would come to big cities and migrate and start working there. Places like Guangdong, which is a part of China that is kind of known as the factory of the world. This place is massive. It's a fair bit bigger than England with double the population of about 120 million people. And these rural migrants came to Guangdong with this dream, this dream of having a better life, making more money, getting a good job and making something of themselves. And they arrived in Guangdong and their souls were destroyed. They would literally be paid pennies an hour to manufacture goods for the Western world, working ridiculously long shifts in these horrible conditions that literally had nets surrounding the building to stop people jumping. It's funny when people go, wow, that's really fucked up. I can't believe they're like yelling at this guy or I can't believe he's saying these things. It's also not false. Like what the fuck? If you're talking about like early, if you're talking about instantly after like foreign capital flooded into China, yes, there was a very long time where conditions were fucking horrible. It's not wrong. It's, it's, this is correct. He's, he's right about this. Ping out and deleting themselves. And so it kind of created this underclass of migrant workers. The people who lived in Guangdong originally and all these other parts, the locals, they would look at the migrant workers in a sort of negative way. They would see them as lower class. They would be rejected from most of society. They've also moved away from their friends and their family into this cold, brutal city. And like after just having all this optimism just sucked out of you and becoming a grunt worker in a factory with no personality identity no friends when one day you log on to qq.com and you see this man luo foxing and you think to yourself foxing how i want to be just like him Luo had actually started to set up groups on popular social networks like QQ and, and Tiber, and he would make these groups called the Shamate family. He actually created the term Shamate by looking into fashion. You know, he, he developed this new interest and he was looking at English websites and he saw the word smart and he kind of poorly translated it back into Shamate. And, and so like the Shamate family group started to just organically grow and Luo Foxing was like the be all and end all. He was the kingpin. He was the leader of these groups and they were very organized he would do things like yeah i'm not like um i'm not an advocate for the liberalization of the marketplace especially as it pertains to china or any other country i simply am stating that what the government does with that foreign capital flowing in is what matters i just want to point that out and and china's prosperity has almost nothing to do with the foreign capital coming in as a standalone it just, because if you look at foreign capital, then you could just point to India. Plenty of foreign capitals flooded into India as well. Also another uh, power, uh, uh, you know, a, a global giant that was colonized. It's what the government does with that foreign capital that matters. It's like tell everyone to go and invade different forums on different websites on Badu and Tayanya. And they would post their pictures promoting their hairstyle, promoting the Shamate. And this kind of spread the group even further, leading to him organizing these offline gatherings in person.
I'm bothered by their hair. Insane haircut that he would open his own hairdressing studio where he could do it for people. And he wasn't the only one. Like this haircut became so popular that there were hairdressers making good livings off of just doing that style. Enough to buy a house, have savings. And the Chamate family, that group itself grew to 200,000 members. And it's estimated that there were millions of kids across China doing this thing. If you go to shamate.org, you can see all of the comments of people saying, please let me join. I want to join. Please. I want to be in the face clown. Come on. I'll, I'll fucking quick scope someone. Please. please. Man, this is a cool video. I recommend you guys watch it. Um, it's from Jimmy the Giant. I'm going to, I'm going to go back to shorter form shit though. Apparently this boxer has a white beard tattoo, which is pretty sick. I, I where is this coming from? Like what 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 is this? What is going on here? Day five of trying to get you to watch this shit. Hey guys, I'm gonna show you my favorite yoinks from 2023. In oh, it's fishing Garrett. This guy's awesome. Love this guy, dude. This guy does not see the top of the hour ad break. Okay. Yeah, because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. This guy, not seeing it. Why? Because he subscribed for $5 or free with a Twitch Prime by connecting his Amazon Prime account to it. So you're going to get one free Prime subscription a month, and he's never looked back, okay? That's right, baby. You can, too. This can be a not only a dream, but a reality for you as well, as long as you subscribe. Here's a three-minute ad break now. Hassan, you're getting lazy now. I miss the cheeky days. All right. Fucking hell, mate. I'll do a cheeky one. In Puerto Rico, me and my buddies found this 15-foot reticulated python. Yoink. This is one of the most powerful snakes I've ever grabbed a hold of. He was incredible. We also got some hatchling retics and some albinos. So cool. Check out this oh. gnarly centipede. You know I had to yoink it. This thing is... Bro, this shit is like... Like Alveus times a million. What the heck? So sketchy. <coughs> Gotta show some love to the smoky jungle frogs. Absolutely love this beautiful rainbow boa. You get a very gentle yoink. By far the most gorgeous snake I've ever seen. Right here we have a spectacle came and trying to escape the yoink. This yellow tailed Kribo is probably my favorite yoink so far. This thing was massive. He's the king of the jungle out here. He even eats the deadly Bushmasters. I love him so much. Definitely a yoink I won't forget. Here's a little jump scare for whoever has arachnophobia. We can't- Wait, what? Does that have one eye? What is that? Look at that. Or are those both of its eyes? Dude, you are a trust phone baby, Lamau. Dude, you should trust that I'm gonna fund my dick in your mother's pussy. Fucking got him. I swear to God, people come from... This guy was on H3 now. He completely nuts in nature. No, I know. I wish, dude. I wish I was a trust fund baby. I wouldn't have to deal with any of this shit. I have two tarantulas. So what's up with the fucking 